friends, my name is Kristen, otherwise known as Kitty Plays. I have been a live streamer on Twitch TV for the past six years. I amassed a million followers on the platform in five years, and I am here to tell you how to live stream. Now, I'm thinking I'm gonna make three parts to this series. I was really inspired by a friend who was saying, right now in this time of isolation, why not make a video talking about your mastery and give it out for free? And if there's a better time to learn about streaming and start sharing those gifts that you have inside of yourself with the world. The time is right meow, right meow guys. Okay, so you've obviously clicked on this video for a reason. Either you've been on my channel before or not. Regardless, welcome. I wanna do everything I can to help you start streaming, start growing a community, start sharing your gift with the world, whether it's a cooking stream or a gaming stream or just a just chatting stream. Just putting yourself out there and sharing your gift and sharing your love with the world because times are rough right now and I think it's a great time to start making content, start making art, start doing something new, start learning something, putting yourself out there. Time is meow, so let's get into it. So I'm currently on a PC. There's lots of different ways you can stream. I'm gonna list them all right here and we're gonna run through them. First of all, PC streaming. This is like the, with the majority of the high quality streams that you are gonna see do. And if you have a computer, if you have a PC, there's a lot of programs that are gonna make it super easy for you to set up. Second is Mac streaming. I know a lot of people have MacBooks for work and things like that. The nice thing about a MacBook is it comes with a built-in camera. You don't need any other peripherals to be able to do that. With a desktop PC, obviously it's just the desktop. You might already have the webcam for Zoom meetings and things like that on your laptop. So there's the PC, there's the Mac, and then we've got the consoles. So Xbox and PS4 actually have built-in streaming uh, abilities. I wouldn't say it's my the best choice for starting out streaming, um, but it is pretty user friendly and I'm not going to go into detail on those because I'm not fluent in it. I'm sure you can find tutorials online. We're going to be talking about streaming on a PC and streaming on a Mac. Now, first things first, and this is super, super, super important. Please, when you are putting yourself out online and you want to build a brand, you want to build an identity online, please, please, please use brand new email addresses, use brand new usernames. There are so many instances where privacy has been breached for people and their security has been compromised and that has led ultimately to not so good things that you have to deal with. I have my share of stories, but that's not what this video is about. I want to make sure that you are picking your username and your emails brand new. If you're ready to create a brand for the first time and you're watching this, unless you already have a brand and you've done this for your Instagram accounts, I want it to be brand new for you moving forward so we can just cut the BS, just eliminate your, you know, school past and let's just let's just start new, okay? So picking a username is something that I think is pretty important because it's going to represent who you are. My biggest advice is don't pick things that have numbers. I mean, underscores work because they can kind of represent a space in your name, but something's concise, make sure you type it out and you read it and you see if there's any secret words within the name, okay? I've seen a lot of friends that have made great usernames, but then in the center of it, it has AS. And if that's your brand, that's great, but make sure you check it just to be sure. Also, try reading your username out loud and try getting friends to read your username out loud as well because a lot of people are gonna be saying it if you're gonna be building a brand online or streaming and you wanna make sure that it's something that is easy for people to read, they get it right away and you're not having to explain how to pronounce your name every single time you're talking to someone in game. All right, so your username has been created. You are ready. You are taking your emails you are making accounts on the platform. Now, the first things first, you're gonna need to pick what live stream platform you wanna be on. There are so many right now. Here is a list of all of them. I'm the most fluent in YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram live streaming. I haven't dabbled in Facebook live streaming yet, although I hear it's great because your live streams can pop up on people's main feeds, so it's a way to get your stream out there. They have better explore features. Also, Caffeine and Mixer. Um, so for today, we are going to be focused on Twitch live streaming from a computer. So Twitch is really interesting because they allow all types of live streaming. I know people predominantly think that this is a gaming only platform, but no, there's things like just chatting, there's things like cooking, there's things like arts and crafts, you can do graphic design, you can show your comics, whatever it is that you are talented in, you can live stream it on Twitch as long as it's with their, within their TOS. 
Um, you can even do IRL streams from your home right now. Hopefully <laughs> you're quarantining yourself. So oh, unless you're watching this video <laughs> after the quarantine. It all right, so now you've made an account, we're gonna be logging into Twitch and making making an account. So putting in your username, putting in your new email and getting started. Now, there's a lot of different programs that you can use to start streaming, but the foundation of most of these is OBS. Whether you're on a Mac or a PC, OBS is like the most like simple foundational streaming programs that you're going to need and it's going to be able to use your camera that's part of your laptop or any webcam that you choose to plug in uh, is going to be able to run that properly so i'm just going to run through really quickly how to set it up if you guys are using windows i would totally suggest that you use streamlabs obs it's super straightforward. They're making it really simple for new users. You can go through and set up your alerts, your overlays. They've got great packages for you. This is not sponsored. I use it myself. I love that they have so many of the things that I used to have run have to run different programs for integrated into one. Um, so I'm gonna show really simply how to set up your first scenes. And what I'm gonna be doing on Streamlab OBS right now, if you are using this as a Mac user uh, and using it through just OBS, you can download that for free online. The processes for it are very similar. However, uh, it's gonna look a little bit different. Mine is just in a dark mode and uh, they've added a few more like pretty features to Streamlabs OBS. So first things first, we are going to be setting up a brand new scene, okay? So we're gonna add, I'm gonna add this for uh, you guys just to notice what I'm doing. But right now you can see I've got my chat mic running through this. I've got a second real tech output. My audio situation is a little bit more complicated, but all you're going to have to do is go into settings, all right? First things first is you're gonna connect your account with your OBS. So I believe OBS has this too. If you want to multi-stream, you actually are able to connect multiple degrees of streaming. All you're gonna need is your stream key to add into these spaces. Um, Streamlabs makes you log in immediately and authorize your Twitch. So that's really easy, but I could multi-stream to Facebook if I wanted to. And once you have this all connected, you're not gonna have to worry about copy pasting your input if you're on PC, but if you're on Streamlabs OBS on Mac, you're gonna have to put that in there. Now we go to output. This is just your uh, quality. So we're gonna be going in. My bit rate is 6,500. I would suggest that you do a speed test right now and you put it anywhere from 3,500 to 6,500. I believe partnered streamers are allowed to do a little bit higher. I'm not sure what the rate is for unpartnered streamer. I'm not up to date on this news, but um, for a smooth stream, you wanna sit at about 3,000 to 3,500 bit rate. If you don't have that where you're living for upload, you definitely can bring it down a bit. Um, you're just not gonna have as high quality or as smooth of experience. Also, if you want to record anything, because this program can be used for recording the exact same way that it's used for streaming. So if you're wanting to record your desktop and your gaming or just record your camera through your laptop for free, um, whether you're singing or whatever you feel like doing that day, um, you can do that through. And this is the same thing. I record at 15,000 bit rate though, zero keyframe interval, and uh, it looks like this so you can set what type of recording format and we're all recording right now so i can't affect any of these um and then you can choose your audio re bit rate i have that at 160 but honestly i would just suggest if for your very first times just letting it auto choose what bit rate you're having and all leave all of these settings to auto unless you're finding that you're running to into issues with dropped frames etc uh, and now for audio, so this is a little bit easier, especially if you aren't running too complicated of a system. My audio device, I have a Go XLR. this is an audio mixer, but normally you would just see the, you know, your Realtek audio, so that's your audio output um, going through your audio jack, um, or if you want the audio to be captured from, I use my monitor for speakers sometimes, I do have speakers I've just not set up, um, then you're gonna run that through here. And then I also run through mic, that's just my chat mic. So that's gonna be whatever default mic you have on your computer or anything that you're plugging in through the USB. Now for video, I run things at my nat native resolution, which this monitor is 1920 by 1080. I run it at 60 frames per second. If you don't have a very strong computer, you can look at going down to 720. 
or even to like 20, I think it's 27 frames per second is what the human eye notices or 29.7. You can go down to that 30 frame mark and you can go down to that 720 resolution. And honestly, your stream is gonna look just fine. People probably aren't gonna notice it, but as you upgrade the quality of products that you're using, you're gonna be able to boost that value. Also, if you have better internet, you can boost that value. Um, all of these things go in towards uh, the quality of your stream. So if you set this to 30, if you set this to 720, it's gonna function just fine if you need to come down a little bit because you're noticing that stream frames are dropping. now. You're gonna notice right here uh, how the performance is. On OBS, I believe it's just a bar in that corner. So right now I'm using 10% of my GPU through recording right now on this program. It's because I am running at such a high uh, frame rate and resolution and bit rate, um, 60 frames per second, zero drop frames. This is gonna be something that you're gonna be wanting to pay attention to. If you notice this number going up, you might wanna rejig it. And then this would say uh, my upload rate. So this uh, stats is really important when you're just starting out as a streamer to pay attention to because it's gonna tell you exactly how healthy your stream is. And I know when I was starting out streaming and using a MacBook and Soundflower and Adobe and all these different programs, it was like running my computer dry and I was getting five frames per second. But that was just fine for me because it was my first time streaming and I want you to know that I was just as nervous to put myself out there and I was just as scared and my stream was terrible quality. Um, but I got the streaming bug and I've had it for six years now. So <laughs> next we're going to look really quickly. Um, hotkeys, hotkeys can be important, um, especially if you're on a single monitor. So if you don't have multiple monitors and you can't tab out and then switch scenes yourself, um, I always like to attach my different scenes to different, um, F1 keys, so or F keys, rather. So if I click F1 right now, that's gonna go to a full screen. F3, this is my uh, gameplay scene. And then F4 is my close, because I like to meme on people. But that, to me, is a really easy way to switch scenes while I'm in game. I'm not having to tab out. Um, but for you, starting out as a streamer, especially if you don't have multiple monitors, also look into doing that, attaching your keys, to um, attaching hotkeys, to switch scenes just so you're not having to tab out and move the game around and things like that. As a new streamer, the less you can overcomplicate it, the better. You just wanna put yourself out there, get yourself in front of the camera, get yourself doing what you love. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to set up your first scene now. So we're gonna go into a new scene, hello. Now I'm gonna show this example with my Logitech webcam. Um, so display capture, we're here. We're in the corner. Now, you're gonna click this plus button right here on your sources. So the first thing is you're gonna have a new scene. You can name this anything you want, and all the different scenes are gonna be relative to what your viewers see, and you can set them up differently depending on different moods you wanna create, um, but then all of the sources are gonna live under the scene umbrella. So we're on a new scene right now. Right now you can see my camera. If I click this little eyeball, it hides it. If I click it again, it comes back up all right adding a new source coming in here i'm going to add a video capture device okay so the two most important things if you're looking at doing video game live streaming is your game capture and your video capture device okay so i'm going to add new source you're going to go to video capture device i've already set up this webcam but you're going to add new source if you can't uh if you don't already have it set up. So we're gonna click on Logitech webcam and it's gonna pop up this box. So from the drop down menu, you are going to click which webcam you want. We are gonna use Logitech HD Pro webcam C920. If you're using a Mac or a built-in camera, you will see here, it should have it registered as uh, what your built-in camera is. Now, I just set my all my resolution down to highest FPS, 1980. Okay, done. So now we've got this camera. When I show this, I can now move this camera around. We're gonna make it custom because typically the Logitech cameras like to auto crop. I'm not sure why they do that. So we want custom 1920 by 1080. Uh, and then right away, it's gonna fit the whole screen that I've just moved it into. So now you would have kind of the backdrop if you're deciding to do a full screen, just chatting stream. If you wanna play music, if you wanna DJ, if you wanna any of those things, this is your kind of background frame. Now I'm gonna show you how this works because there's a little bit of layering that goes on. Now, whatever is at the top of the sources, that is what's gonna sit on top of your scene. Uh, you can drag it down below the other, and then it will get 
put behind or in front of. So this to me is really, really important because as we add more components into our source, we are going to need to layer them such as, let's get into it, a game capture, yay! So adding source game capture, game capture is really easy. You're just gonna add source and then whatever game you have running, I'm gonna boot up something really quick. All right, so I've booted up Dota in the background. So now if I go to the game capture, I want my webcams to sit in front of it. I'm gonna leave the display capture there just for now. And we're gonna go to properties and we're gonna capture a specific window. <laughs> You're gonna go down and select whatever game that you wanna be capturing. Now, when I get rid of the display capture, you can see Dota functioning in the back. Now it's lagging a little bit because it's set to full screen mode and um, once I am tabbed onto it, it should be fine. So they're the heroes. And now you've got some sort of webcam mixed with gaming. Uh, and it's important when you're first starting streaming gameplay, especially, is to recognize that there are different areas of the gameplay that are okay to block with a webcam, but you should keep in mind that the natural UI of the game. So I believe for Dota, there's a few couple little spots you can go that you're not blocking anything important. Um, but keep that in mind when you're placing your webcam uh, when you're first starting streaming. Setting up display capture is the same thing. You can set which screen you would like to display, whether it if you have multiple monitors, but this will automatically pick your monitor if you only have one. So we're gonna keep capturing this. All right, guys, you've done it. You've set up your game capture. You've set up your display capture. You've set up your full screen. But now it is time to go live, all right? You're gonna go down to this corner. Um, in Streamlabs OBS, it pops out this chat, so you're gonna be able to see your chat. And you're gonna click go live. This is going to send all this up into the interwebs to the account that you've connected it with, with the stream key that you have, and you are ready to live stream to the internet. Now, this is only the beginning, okay? We gotta get into alerts, we've gotta get into uh, PayPal integration, we've gotta get into credit card integration, we've gotta get into advertising and stream best practices, and we will do that in another stream. But for now, guys, it's time to go live. It's time to try it out. It's time to let me know what you think. If you guys are a new streamer, Hi, I would love for you to message me on my accounts, Kitty Plays. I would love to stop by and support you and send my community there if you guys are new and up and coming, especially if you're doing something really unique on your stream, sharing your gift with the world because we need the masters of the world to come and start sharing the information and uplifting everybody and time to learn some new skills, time to do some new things, time to challenge ourselves. Thank you guys for watching this video. Stay tuned to part two, where I'll be talking all about how to set up alerts and how to set up your webcam. Bye.